Good morning, and welcome to our online sermon here at Lion Lake United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Joel Fitzgerald. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. I have heard of your faith within the Lord Jesus, and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand and in the heavenly places. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today we continue our thinking about how we live as resurrection people. And today we're going to focus particularly on education because that has been an important way as we as United Methodists understand how we love God and love our neighbor. The importance of education starts here, and that is that our encounter with Christ does not end with one meeting. With one meeting at the resurrection, our encounter with Christ doesn't end there. The reality of the resurrection doesn't end after the first encounter with Christ. The disciples continue to encounter the risen Christ. Jesus didn't just come back and say, hey, I'm here, here's what to do, and then peace out. No, he kept coming back again and again. And indeed, even after the ascension, Christians have continued to learn how to grow in relationship with Christ, have had to learn how to continue to live and grow in relationship with Christ. Our encounter with Christ, our encounter with God, isn't a one-time thing, at least in our tradition. It's not a thing that, that happens once and then... We, our ticket is punched and we don't need to worry about it. It is a, a relationship that we grow into. And just like any relationship that we grow into, it's something that takes time and learning and growth. After I, I when me and my wife were getting ready to have our first kids, we, we read all of the baby books we could, read all of the, the books about parenting, about how to take care of these uh, the little babies. And then we had a baby. And we realized we had so much more to learn. And indeed, even after having one and feeling like we had mastered this, having another one, we had to learn so much more again. Having a child, being a parent, it isn't something that just uh, happens when, you, when the baby comes into the world. It's something you learn how to, to do again and again and again. One of the, uh, the common things about parenting I've heard uh, from folk is that uh, about the time you figure out how to parent a four-year-old, they turn into a five-year-old. And that's kind of like our relationship with Christ. It's something that's always growing, always changing, and something that we then always need to keep learning and, and expanding. This is because our, our lives change. We may have encountered Christ, we may have come to the faith in, in one stage in our life, and now maybe we're at a different stage. Now maybe we have gone through some hard experiences, some experiences of dislocation, some experience of hardship, and we need, we need to figure out how we can, can live in this faith, if we can live in this faith in these new times. And not only that, the world changes around us. How we relate, relate to Christ is, is tied up with the, the, just the functioning of the world around us. In COVID, when COVID first happened, we all had to learn how to how to do church and, and worship and, and everything else online without being in person. And then we quickly learn how crucially important having those in-person communities and connections are. It, it gave us a, a, better, uh, a better understanding of, of the importance of what it meant to be a community. And so this ongoing, evolving nature of our relationship with Christ is why we learn and we grow in faith. The author of First Ephesians here is, is, is talking to us about growing and learning in our faith. Verse 17 and 18, he says, That God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father full of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, 
What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? So the first part is, we have the spirit of wisdom from God as we continue to know Christ. No, no, notice what it says. It doesn't say it in the past tense, right? Like, okay, you became a Christian. Now it's all over. You're done. You don't need to grow or learn. No, it says you've come to know Christ. And as you continue to, to further know Christ, you will continue to learn and to grow. And then it says that we have this enlightenment to help us continue to see the hope ahead of us. So, so knowing and, and learning and growing in the hope that is ahead of us is something that takes that growth and that learning. Throughout the history of our church, the, the Methodist movement, we see the importance of this growing, of this learning, of this education. And that is because, sort of back to the beginning, we as Methodists don't believe faith is a one-time thing. John Wesley, the founder of our movement, didn't, didn't think that, that a true relationship with God is something you just that happens once and, and then it's over and we don't have to do anything. He believed that it was a relationship, that it was something, in his words, that we were going on to protect for perfection, something we were, would work on throughout our lives. And in learning, learning more things, growing is one of those things. If you remember, the way we Methodists do theology, the way we think about God is is through what we call the quadrilateral. And one of the, the legs, one of the lenses by which we uh, interpret the scriptures and interpret our world is through our reason, through our thinking. Reason helps us know more about the world around us, know about ourselves as human and, and what it means to, to live in good relationship with ourselves and with each other and with the world. Now, of course, it's not the only lens we look at. It's not the only thing, but it is one of them and an important one. And so to engender and engage in that reason means to grow in faith, to stretch ourselves, just as we stretch ourselves in other areas of our faith. Just as we grow in discipleship, so too do we grow in knowledge. So what does this look like for us? I think the first thing is to continue to grow in our faith, to learn more about the Bible, Learn more about what it is that we base our faith on. Learn more about what it means to be a follower of Christ. And we do that through learning about the Bible, through learning about the history of the church, about the, the 2,000 years and the billions of people who have gone this path before us, and, and thinking that maybe they have something interesting to say that might speak to us. And then also learning about our neighbor. Remember, what, what are our two main jobs as Christians is to love God and love our neighbor. And one of the ways in which we can love our neighbor is, is learning about what's happening to our neighbor. Learning about what's happening to our neighbors around the world, our neighbors right here in Albion. And then the second thing is this, and that is to support others in their faith growth. To, to create a community, to create uh, opportunities for others to grow in their faith. One of the important things for me and growing in my faith and also my wife was uh, Wesley Fellowship when we were students at LB in college. Wesley Fellowship was a, a group of primarily uh, Methodists, but also just generally uh, Protestant Christians who gathered together more mainline. And we gathered together on Sunday nights at the LB in First United Methodist Church. And uh, we would make a meal or sometimes some church folk would bring us a meal and we'd have discussions and book studies and Bible studies and and that was leading, it was through leading Wesley Fellowship that me and my wife uh, came to start dating and, and began to confirm our call into ministry. And that might not have happened, both the great thing of our relationship, but also the reality of our call might not have happened if we didn't have that space to both practice right, what it meant to lead others in faith and also to wrestle with all those questions ourselves. So part of living as resurrection people is to continue to learn, to continue to grow, to stretch our minds and, and think more deeply about the world around us, about the God who loves us, and about the neighbors who God calls us to love. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks that you gave us these beautiful brains that we can, can learn and grow and be more like you. Help us in this work, God, we pray. Amen.